Want to 10x your growth? Discover how only three growth hacks in 10 days can change everything. Welcome to the 10 Day Growth Hacking Challenge with your host, Nader Sabri. Today, we are here with Mark Jarrett shaking things up when it comes to power virtual networking with a direct access point of almost 50 or 50,000 plus people across 200 WhatsApp groups. He is wheeling, he's greasing the wheels when it comes to power networking. When the pandemic had kicked in, he had kicked up and put what he already knew in place was going to kick in. And today is working his way to monetizing and scaling this powerful network he has in place. Before we get started to do what we do here, we use the Growth Thinking Design Methodology book. If you want to do what we're doing, this is your answer. Welcome aboard, Mark. How are you doing? <laughs> Fantastic. Hi, warm greetings from the UK to Dubai. Hello, hello. How's the weather Hi. over there? <laughs> uh, uh, variable, changeable. It's yeah. autumn. So uh, one minute it's sunny, the next minute it's raining. Nice. Like, but autumn has the beauty of the change of colors. I, I, I've experienced it, of course, in other countries. There's always a nice transition period. <laughs> yes. And uh, there's a lot to be said for a temperate climate. That's why we uh, have such a green and pleasant land. Awesome. Awesome. So let's get kick started. We're here today on growth hack number three. Before we get started on growth hack number three, do you have any updates on hack one or two? Any results, implications, uh, 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 anything that's come out of it that you'd just like to update us on on hack one or two? Yeah, well, my, my network's quite large uh, and I've made progress now in reaching out to uh, my network one by one. Um, and asking them if they find value in what I do. Most of them do, uh, and most seem um, receptive to signing up to, to my um, uh, bronze, silver, gold, platinum packages for access to the, uh, to the WhatsApp groups. Um, and I've had one more uh, sign up to engage in my services so I can uh, network for people because uh, a lot of people don't enjoy networking or don't have the time, I can network for them using my uh, uh, net networking concierge service. Amazing. For those who want more information about what Mark is talking about, you can click below. And if you want to know more about the story behind all of this, you can head over to the first video, which is the kickoff video, where we go into a lot more detail about the different packages he has, including one of the key problems he solves, which is networking for people who don't want to network. <laughs> does he does he does the hard, he does the heavy lifting for you of course for a fee and a reasonable fee that is as well um awesome so that's hack number one uh what about hack number two with the emails and i really like that shift well yeah uh, email is going to start playing quite a key role in my life now because uh i'm beginning the process of um, um a survey and i'm going to be collecting uh email addresses from uh from my tribe I've got all their phone numbers by virtue of me being a prolific networker on WhatsApp groups. So by definition, I have their phone numbers. Okay. Um, and now I'm gonna start um, uh, the process of collating uh, their email addresses as well and uh, start the process of um, email marketing as well. Awesome. Yeah, and, and that's a crucial part as we talked about in the last hack. That's the only real digital asset you ever really own. And on top of that, it's probably the best digital asset of them all. As you saw, Facebook went down last night. And imagine if you were dependent 100% on your phones on all Facebook network products, including Instagram and WhatsApp. And uh, that goes to show the kind of level of dependencies we have on some things. And if those things stay down or, 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 okay, they come back up, obviously they will, they back it up, but there could be some damages or lost information. What would you do? I mean, that can cost you a lot of money. Uh, email and having the email list and having that backed up and being able to tap in that email list is 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 obviously a testament to this scenario that happened last night to that you know once you've got that in place I mean, it doesn't really make a difference what goes up or down you've got that list and you can keep pumping away at it right so, so there we go so here we are hack now number three uh if you can explain to us what it is what has happened and where you're going with it Okay, so hack number three is I'm going to be using sur a survey uh, to find out exactly what the goals are uh, of my client uh, of of my network. So I've come up with a uh, a survey. Do you enjoy networking? 
Um, do you in, prefer in-person or virtual networking? <laughs> How many networking events did you attend in the last month? Have you ever used WhatsApp to network? Would you be prepared to pay someone to network for you? Can you take on clients outside your home country? Do you pay referral commissions? Um, would you like to grow your network? Would you agree that your network is your net worth? And then please describe to me your ideal, your dream client, your ideal referral. And then I've got an accurate snapshot of what that individual is in their networking journey. I mean, we're all hardwired to network and grow our tribes. Yep. But as you uh, mentioned, some people hate it. About 10% of all people just, it's not their thing at all. Hmm. But more than half of all people quite like it, but they just don't have the time. It's quite a time consuming process. Exactly. And the energy. So, so for those data points that you've mentioned, are these going to be used for matching or is this just pure 100% profiling or how will you use that data once you've got it? Um, a bit of both. Once I, I, I've got it, then uh, I can use it as a, um, as a conversation point for because for example if if they uh, answer yes they would be prepared to pay someone uh, to network for them then obviously that's a, a red hot um buy signal for me okay okay, okay. And that's, that, that's so maybe um maybe one of the considerations is breaking it down into two different uh data collection opportunities, meaning maybe the first one is about qualification because I hear qualification questions in there and maybe qualifying first, like you know, paid versus non-paid. And then you can survey paid and non-paid differently. And, and that, that's a, I think that's a fair game because those who you, who, those who would be ready to pay, you would ask them different questions and those who are not ready to pay, you would ask them different questions. You'd ultimately profile both of them. Um, and you would find different ways to make things work. If ultimately you have people in your network that don't want to pay and don't pay commission and don't really want to network, then um, you know, obviously, I mean, that that would you can give these even a score, like a score system internally, one through five. And so those with high potency, you can put it at number five. Those with low potency, you can put it at number one. And so you have like a definitive way defining those who are really potent and not so potent. And so you can divide that into two data sets. You can get them all in the same place. I mean, obviously, with using a Google form and Google Sheets, it'll all come in the same place. But you again, it gives you the power to filter. Do you, do you think that that would work better for you? Um, it would for those people in my Dunbar number, you know, the people in my inner circle, I, I would know how to differentiate. But with the people I don't know so well on the periphery, so to speak, um, I would need to find out first where they uh, where they lie um, and, and what their yes. goals are before I drill down a bit further. Exactly. And as well, there's another thing about what you're doing right now, which is going to become part of your onboarding process in the future. And one of the areas that we talk about in this challenge consistently, which is a huge failure point, is onboarding. So one of the first things that you can do, you have your own onboarding process, which I've seen, but part of it should be this survey when you onboard new people so that once you profile them, you have fresh new data that you're able to create the matchmaking with on top of the other things that you do. Um, and so you keep that data fresh because as you've mentioned, there's people that you know well, obviously, because you understand their profile. Then there's those that you don't. But ultimately, you need to turn it all into data uh, because ultimately yeah. you're going to be matchmaking, um, you know, and you'll be using this in other ways in the future, of course. But ultimately, is we want to get that data in, in the best quality way, at, at least from now. Uh, and then you can update it in the future with different data points. So I think like I think breaking it, segmenting it between those who are who are ready to pay, not to pay, right? Versus those who are actively networking, those not actively networking, give you that kind of one, two, so imagine one, two, three, four, five. So you have like four to five are like your high potency, one to two are in the area. And in the middle, you've kind of got people that are neutral, maybe people who are actively networking, but don't want to pay or the opposite, right? Uh, they do want to pay, but don't actively network. I mean, you know, so you've got this one middle zone. And so how you decide to deal uh, in, so you'd break into three segments. Like, how do I deal from one to two? How do I deal with people number three in the middle? And how do I deal with people who have a score of four to five? And this now allows you to segment your communications and get a lot more effective in the way that you match make. So imagine that you've got someone on potency number five, but someone in a network on a level number one or two. And these guys have a, a certain 
access point that's a value to somebody uh, who's a four or five. And so that drives a really important networking question for you is how do I match a four or five to a number one or two, or how do I ma match a number one or two to a number five, or do I not do it at all? Right? So those are like super strategic questions that you can automate and scale actually. So you don't need to guess every single time. Once you've got a profile, you can continue working with it. Absolutely. And once I start uh, collating all this data, I've then effectively got a CRM, which I haven't been using so far. But yes. by having all the contact details of all my um, network in one area, de facto, that becomes, uh, with a bit of tweaking, mm. um, a, a, a content management system. Exactly, exactly. And then you're able to feed in more data and transactional information in the future, which becomes even more vital to the whole CRM. Um, and one thing to keep in the back of your mind when it comes to intellectual property, that CRM with that kind of data can become very valuable. You may be able to sell it sometime in the future, something you may have not thought about. Um, you can sell it in a few ways to monetize it. One is leasing, which is obviously selling access to, act, to, to people that actively network. Or the other way is that you as an organization uh, may become an acquisition target. Uh, you never know. Um, having that intellectual property in place with the data and the transactions and the, and, and, and the CRM could be very valuable to your long game. Good. Yes, very good yeah. point. Uh, uh, well made. I've already got an enormous um, database of, of telephone numbers uh, through my WhatsApp activity, but now I'm going to line that with uh, um, email addresses and the goals, uh, yeah. as we just discussed. Exactly. Awesome. So I think that's going to be really awesome. I think you're going to have also some very unique networking data that many people would love to have access to. I, of course, I wouldn't give access to it unless you figure out the monetization or, or the collaboration reasons to do that. Um, but ultimately, it's like you need to monetize it before anything else because you're putting the time, money and effort, obviously, to make this happen. Um, and the tooling for this is really simple. You don't need some, you don't need anything more complicated than a Google Forms and a Google Sheets, at least for now. Um, you can transfer that into a CRM at any time. You can turn it into a CSV file and and drop that data into almost any of the major CRMs that are very cost effective, as low as like you know a lot of them start at even just free, all the way to just nine, ten, twenty bucks a month, which is which is nothing when it comes to managing those kinds that kind of information. But you don't need any of that fancy stuff at the moment. You start low friction with, with the free tools and just use that for now. Good to know. Thanks, Nada. Yeah, awesome. So, guys, that's hack uh, number three. Uh, anything else you want to share with us before we move on? Uh, I, I would share that um, e even if you're, you know, time poor, try and devote some time um, in, in your um, working week. Uh, to, to networking and, and to, to grow your network. Um, awesome. awesome. That will be my tip. We'll, we'll dig a bit more into that, into the implications in the next video, which we're going to talk a little bit more about how this has impacted you as well. Um, so yeah, guys, so check it us, check us out in the next video. Mark, thank you very much. We'll thank go you. Over and we'll do the next thing. There we go. Bye.